That's the truth. Let's do that. The mic is broken. We're late. Andy Warhol's already arrived. Paul Morris is here. Beautiful girl. You're here. What's your name? I'm Sally. And all the beautiful girls. Have you seen the best? You saw the three minutes? In television? No. You look like a very dignified lady. Yes, but I'm here for a silly ballady. If I hear the skill is about S&M, sadist and masochist, is that true? Do you approve of that? You approve too? Here's Taylor V. Taylor. Taylor, come on. What would you have given to play the part of Charlotte Rampling in the night quarter? Just like Joan Crawford. Goodbye, Charlotte. Bye-bye. Nick, will you put an end? The on guard. One minute. There they go. Before putting an end to the rumors that their marriage is on the rocks. They look happy. They look beautiful. Off they go. That's the old case. We have the quote from Mick Jagger where he said, put an end to the rumors, tell me the truth, are you madly in love with Bianca? He said, yes, I'm madly in love, but fuck off. Then he asked Bianca, are we madly in love? And she said, yes, we are madly in love. Read about it in my column, Star Talk with a National Star, out next week. A whole page full of all the things you've seen on this show and more. Yes, it's true, the rumors are ended, they're madly in love. Memories, uh, their friendship. Now, you and Jagger. I don't know, but the truth is, she sued you to keep one picture out of the book. The picture showing her baby looking a little older, a little Wrinkled, the bad lighting. I, I showed one of those. And you did show. Why was that? Why couldn't you help celebrate that myth of beauty? Why did you want to expose her, maybe in harsh reality? Was that a little cruel? Was that a little, no, even in no, honor no. of the night, sadistic? No, she must face reality. <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> We're all getting old. <laughs> I know. The line show. We have to accept ourselves. Do you miss her? Basically. I understand <laughs> you don't photograph her anymore. Do you miss her as a subject? Oh, yes. With my ideal subject. Well, this there's is no one else to take a place. Well, why don't you keep shooting? Why? Because there's an injunction, 25 feet. <laughs> oh, can't you use a telephoto lens? No, she, she, I don't trust her anymore. She can break the rule. Well, what about, what about Carolyn? I get $10,000 all fine. I don't make that much money from nothing. What about Carolyn or John John? Well, I thought we have them. What that public event? I thought we have the, the cars films. There's money. Are you planning to, you know, sort of, have an all new, all encompassing subject like Jackie's or somebody new I'm taking your place. Next week, next uh, year. And who will be the subject? Rando and Cabot, chapter one. Chapter two, three, and four. Have you collected any money? I remember. Taylor and Richard Burke. I'm giving my secrets. That's <laughs> Jackie invaded my privacy. Stage, Did you collect any money yet from Brando after he socked you in the jar? No, it's, it's still in litigation. We cannot talk about that. This paper will be subpoenaed. Subpoenaed. This show will be subpoenaed. Thank you very much, Ron Galella. It is absolutely one of the most famous and biggest party crashes in New York. I can't go to a party that he isn't there. Coming to the doors now, thank you very much, is Mrs. Wilson, who I'm sure is invited, and Earl Wilson, so we'll have to talk to them. Here they come in. Coming in with a fur coat, of course, is Mrs. Earl Wilson, looking beautiful and all funny. And there's Earl Wilson, always everywhere. Earl, good to see you. Listen, what brings you up? You know, what I want to know is this. We're getting perversity in things. It's becoming accepted. Here you come. It's celebrating. Going to a party where it's sadistic and masochistic and Nazi. Is it that kind of thing? What's the with Jackie? Is Jackie getting divorced? Tell me. Subject of suits, Mr. Wilson? Only once and I won it. I won $8. Thank you very much. One of the world's greatest party columnists, Earl Wilson. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Where's Barnaby? You're beautiful, child. Yeah. Huh? Listen, how do you feel about making the most celebrated film of the year, being in the one of the most glorious stages and celebrating? It's unbelievable. It's a terrible question to ask. I can't answer it. <laughs> Let the public say that, not me. Are you happy with the final rushes of the film? You've seen it this final entirety. Are you happy the way it turned out? I know that you were given complete photographic approval for your layouts in Playboy. Did you have that same approval in your film? Yes. And how did, did you work, only want to work with women directors? I know that really it's exciting working with women. How do you feel it, it corresponded to working with a male director? Same thing. We're both the same. We're both the same. Zardo, of course, is also a fabulous film. Tell me, when will that be opening in America? Okay, off they go. They all want you. The greatest sex star in the world, Charlotte Rampling. There she goes, and she's a mother. Off she goes, Charlotte Rampling, the night quarter. Sexy, chic, perverse, the total mixture, the total women. Charlotte Rampling up the steps to the Four Seasons restaurant, the photographers clamoring, everyone chasing after the real star of the night. was interesting, the fact that you are a mother, and I'm, I'm sure a good mother. In fact, I remember reading an interview that uh, you said, you know, you hated to leave your child alone, but you had the work and you took it, but how do you feel about being a mother and really a sex symbol? <laughs> It's true that, uh, I, like, I didn't even know you didn't bring Barnaby with you, but of course I want to make it perfectly clear that, that Miss Rampling is married as well as being a mother, and your husband's name is... Brian Tavern. And so Brian used to be, he's upstairs. Who, who has the baby now? Do you still have that boy taking care of him? No, we have a nanny now. Do you, did you feel at all that the film is perverse in any way? I mean, they're all picking up on the S&M number and the, the arrangements upstairs. Are the... It's not perverse, it's reality. Were you at all repulsed about any ideas in the film when you first read them? Did you have to be convinced to do the film or anything that you did in the film? Listen, I just had my son, right? And I read the script to one month ago. Oh, I don't feel it was perverse at all. I agree with you totally on reality. But the people are picking up on that, you know. But that's why it's fun to talk to you about it and get your idea because. As a mother, you wouldn't do anything that was like that, and exactly. I understand that. I had a child that was so young, but her mother in that, whatever mother she is, however much she likes children, if you are a mother and you've had a baby, you are in a very vulnerable state physically and mentally. Do you want more children, or will you, sac will you sacrifice your, your career to have children, or how will you work that in? I know Genevieve Waite said that uh, in her new play, Paul Morrissey said he could write the pregnancy in. Would you do a film where you were pregnant and have it real life? I'm not a mom. I'm not anything. I'm just, in fact, I'm a modern woman. So, a fabulous woman. I say, who is your favorite designer? I think this looks like. This is Rizzo. He didn't do the clothes for the film, did he, by any chance? Which girl? My daughter, no. Kelly Joseph was a fine. He was the most brilliant designer. You know, this, this is hardly your only film or your first film in lots to come. Is Zardoz, has it been released in America as yet yet? Zardoz. All over the United States? Uh, <laughs> who else would you like to make a... Oh, yeah. Oh, he was... 
all the time. I miss the Zardoz. Right. I wish I hadn't. But who else would you? Who, who would you like to make a film with? Is there a favorite director or a favorite star or that you have lined up that you'd like to work with? No, I wouldn't really want to have to work with the others. I have to get to know. How do you feel about your personal beauty? It's very important to your career. Do you take care of yourself in a certain way, or diet, or what, what do you do? Just, just, just a natural, beautiful girl, I can tell, because there's hardly any makeup, and your eyes are a lovely shade of blue or green. I don't know. It changes. It, it changes. Lovely blue. What are your politics? Do you have, do you have politics? I prefer to discuss it. Is there anything out there that you'd like to say that perhaps people haven't asked you, or I'm not asking you? Is there, is there something you'd like to tell? A, a statement? Anything about the film or about yourself or anything at all, a favorite charity, anything you want to say. It's okay, I noticed that under your arms you don't, you don't shave, is that because... No, they just haven't done it lately. You haven't done it lately. In fact, I read they asked you... The truth. I've been working very hard now at the time. I don't shave, but I don't wax. I think you once said that you wa you shaved the bikini line, but that uh, you wouldn't no, do I it waxed again. The bikini you waxed line, it. And I waxed it on my arms and my legs. Does it hurt? Yes. I never wax. Is it worth it? It's better than having a man's a man's uh, beard on your legs or on your arms. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> okay, we will cut to go. Are you having a fun at the party? Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have it down. Charlotte Rampling, one of the most beautiful and sexy stars in the world. Looking for your husband? <laughs> You're looking a little closer for the mic. You're looking for your husband? I sure am. You lost him? Well, yeah. somebody said he went through the door. I don't think he did. I think he went to talk to somebody else. Well, I know one thing. No one could ever call you fat. Even though you're doing a great job on Broadway, we love you and my fat friend. I saw you talking with Charlotte Rampling, and of course you're both English. Yes. Did you know each other in yeah. England? Her first movie was in Georgia. Did you predict all this predict all this great stardom for Charlotte? I thought she'd be pretty terrific, yeah. I'm, I think it's been a little slow in coming. Uh, I expected her to make it two years ago. Now she, she's done it, so it's good. Have you seen the night porter? Good night, Francesca. Never seen it, but uh, Friday. Well, that's exciting. What do you think, you know, of course, they're talking about it being a little perverse, the S, the M, and, you know, yeah. how, do you, how do you feel about that? Well, um, it sounds like a marvelous movie. I mean, I can't really comment it's a great on it without, movie. without seeing it. Right. So, so I haven't seen it. But with the, if, work, and I think she's really if someone told you you were going to have to, you know, uh, do something like that little S and M in the film, would you, how would you react when you heard it? You know? I think it depends a lot on the director and who you're working with as to how you're going to do that. When are you going to do some films? I'm going to do some new films for you. Now, we love to watch you and all them. Did you have a nice time at the party? Was it nice? They started it at 8.30 so we can get home. It's a nice party. We're not so we can get home to the party anyway. I make out a party too. Nice party. How do you like living in New York now? I like it. I didn't. I split you before. It's mad. Georgie girl, you know, it's, I even learned to play it on the piano. I love the movie so much. Yeah. No, it was great. So, how much longer of a run did uh, my fat friend have? Well, we've been on about six months, and I think we'll be on another three months. Do you, do you worry about it, you know, how big, you know, how long will it run? Are you out to break records? Or? No, I'm not out to break records. I'm just out to make a living. Yeah. How about children? How about children? More? Yeah. Want some more? Want some more? It's very easy to do. Yeah. Now I want to be on I have two already. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. I enjoyed it very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Lynn Redway, the star of My Fat Friend. In fact, she is coming down the stairs again. I'll see you at 10, but I have to not chase up because Nikki Ella told me that. Charlotte Rampling coming down the stairs again. Did you see me? No, I was in the loop. Andy Warhol on the stairs watching the star of the evening, Charlotte Rampling. What? Party's over. It's 12 o'clock. We've had a wonderful time. You should have seen the flower maidens with the gloves and the, and the bells and the chains and the lock and the keys that means strike me. On all the tables was this. 
This is a matchbook with a key. It means strike me. Also, also on the table we had we had the glove, we had the bell, we had red carnations for the blood, we had the chain, we had the lock and the key. All symbols of things that happened in the movie The Night Porter. And there is Nancy Collins of Women's Wear Daily. Really, the most beautiful girl tonight. She is the beautiful girl here tonight. One of the most beautiful girl reporters in New York. Did you have a good time at the party? And what's this? I understand you and Dustin Hoffman have the same face, lady. We both have the same facial, so I'm not going to give out any advertisements right now. What's the hottest piece of gossip you picked up at the party? Um, well, probably like, and everybody thinks about the idea that Joe Levine could do Dustin's, you know, play as an extraordinary man. Otherwise, I just think that Liliana Cavani is fabulous, and Charles Branson as well. Oh, this is a bodily please. Say just my words. We know you've just been they just Susan Genevieve Wade. <laughs> Genevieve, can you two go closer? Oh, come on, girls. A little closer for us. Oh, Susan Genevieve Wade. 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 Susan husband in black velvet. Yeah. 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 It's not the loo, it's the ladies' lounge. In tone, Charlotte Laughlin Redgrave goes chasing her off into the ladies' room. Oh, on the machine. And this, on the, <laughs> on the Sony. This is Brian Southcombe, who just happens to be, or whose wife just happens to be, whichever way it's, you know, uh, whichever diplomatic way I should say it. How should I say it? But it is Charlotte Rampling. How do you feel about it? You know, do you want to be her husband, or do you want her to be your wife? Are you sensitive about it? No, I'm not the least bit sensitive. I'm very proud. You should be indeed. And of course, I understand you actually gave up your career in public relations to so you could travel with her. And is that, is that true? Or I only know what I mean. Are you managing her now? Uh, and we have lovely social lawyers and gnomes in Zurich who do all the manager. I'm just there to support. <laughs> I know, because you probably it's great because you get a lot, spend a lot of time with your son Barnaby and. That must be great. And this, I understand she told me this is the first time you haven't traveled with, with him. Yes. You miss him too? Very much. I, she told me she was running around the Sharon Netherlands Suite looking for him. And I know. <laughs> and I keep my watch on London so I know what time he's waiting for him. How did you feel about the film The Night Porter? It's a great film. It's very good, but it's very disturbing for us. Exactly, exactly. It is disturbing. Tell us a bit about how disturbing it is and what disturbed you most. And uh, did you put your foot down and say you can't do this and they didn't do that on the film? Or? No, because I wouldn't do that with, with uh, a woman who, who I think is a very valid actress. A great actress. One whose depth hasn't been found yet. Uh, no, one can't do that. But the one doesn't particularly like seeing one's wife um, involved in situations which uh, could perhaps be personal. Um, it happens that they're not personal in the night. The situation in the night, what is not personal. But it could get personal in other films. How are you going to react to that? How are you going to feel about that? It never will, because um, if Charlotte ever had to do a film that was based on sexuality, which this film is, um, it would mean she was pretty desperate for a job. And Charlotte would never be desperate for a job. So therefore she'll never accept But maybe, you know, it was what, as they say, maybe it's an integral part of the story. Would there ever be a time where you put your foot down and say, Charlotte? can't do that or that's it. No, Sean is pretty good at integrity, so she dictates her own functions on it. What's she like to live with, be around the house with? Very warm, very, uh, very much a wife. Can you tell us any cute little story that might have happened while you've been here in New York? Any little, any little inside thing that you haven't told anybody else? 
Yeah. No, because we've been here a very short time. Um, we're staying in a hotel suite, which is... Well, what did she say? Are there any cute little things she might whisper in your ear about the party or the film or, or what she's been doing in New York? What, does she confide in you something you can confide in us? Well, um, we laugh a little. Because one has to. Brian Southcombe, thank you for joining us on Invasion of Privacy. My pleasure. <laughs> I wanted to ask what it was like to sleep with her, but it's not that I didn't dare. You know what I was just going to say? This, all right, I've got to say it, and I've got to say it. I wasn't going to, because, but I've got to. What's it like to sleep with Charlotte Rampling? Okay, I asked it. You've got it. <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Up against the painting here, the photographer snapping away at Charlotte Rampling. That's a terrible evening for all my life. I'm sure that the movie is great, and I love a Chamberly Chambers, or whatever her name is. Where's the glove? Definitely. Where's the glove that is sticking out of this? the glove. I just can't think any more of this avant-garde stuff. Where was the glove, Taylor? The glove. The glove was last year's. I refuse to make any further statements for such a low press as the National Enquirer. This is not true. Richard, it's not true that Richard Burton... The Enquirer is Taylor low press. Is, no, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton are still the best of friends. It's just that they only see each other on Wednesdays. <laughs> Off he goes, Taylor Mead. No, there on the left is Mrs. Howard Johnson. In the middle is Sandra Sykes. And of course, there on the right is the famous hairdresser Eugene St. Andre. How was the party, girls? Fantastic. The best part was having Dustin Hoffman here because he was one of the people that was made by Bill Levine. I'm a graduate. And now we're going to be playing starting. That's great. That's going to be Are you girls afraid of losing your husbands to Charlotte Rampling? Yes. Definitely. No. Would you lick boots no. and use chains? Would you allow your husbands to treat you like that? <laughs> I haven't seen the movie yet. Is that what she does? She does it all. Well, I'm going to take lessons starting tomorrow. I'm going to see the movie. I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock, whatever time the movie opens. to see the whole thing. Am I right to assume that those beautiful hairdos were created by Eugene? Definitely. And Eugene, tell us about the beauty of Charlotte Rampling. Is she one of the great beauties of the world? I think she has the type of beauty that will age well. I think she will. Um, she has that ease of European simplicity. Very natural. Her this is Joseph Levine, no, 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 no. the creator of all of America's greatest films, especially The Night Porter starring Charlotte Rampley. Uh, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jagger, Mick Jagger, say something with me too. Yes, I'm a steel flower. That's what I'm going to say to you. Boy. You want to buy the two? Yeah. Do you want this right here? No Thank you so much. Yeah. As beautiful in the person as they are on the film and on stage. Did you ever get a lot of people back there? Mick Jagger, Bianca Jagger, up the staircases at the party, at the Four Seasons, celebrating Charlotte Rampling's film, The Night Porter. Dustin Hoffman, you told a very interesting story upstairs about all over town, how you lost all the money at 9 o'clock and got it at 9.30 from Joe Levine. It's all true. <laughs> yeah, all over town, she plays with my sister Rose, and I'm her uh, director, yeah. and we yeah. had to do the year. And we started work uh, this Saturday, and we've been working on it four months, and the backers back out of it uh, last Thursday. And uh, at 9 o'clock this morning, we're going to tell all the actors that the show's closed before it opened. So I ended up there and calling Mr. Levine, and I called and said, we need the money to go into rehearsal to support the play. And he said, how much have you told us to do that? Because of him, we have 24 people for the job starting Saturday morning. And we go four weeks in rehearsal, we open the National Theater in November, and come back to New York and open hopefully before Christmas. If anybody wants to uh, be a part of the show and contribute, my number of names in the phone.
And because of Mr. Levine too, I'm sure in New York we'll get a fabulous new hit. And sure we'll get you on the stage and we'll all look forward to going and seeing all over town. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Just talk to him. 